Um, <clears throat> so in this study, we um, uh, involved uh, several early detection research network sites and several uh, specialized program of research excellence sites and took advantage of pre-diagnostic specimens from the prostate, lung, and colon ovarian cancer screening trial. And what we sought to do in this study was to compare the current best screening markers for ovarian cancer, first in case control specimens, these are so-called phase two specimens taken at the time of diagnosis of ovarian cancer. We compared about 50 different markers from these, uh, from these specimens and then moved to bloods that were taken from the PLCO, bloods drawn months or years prior to the diagnosis of ovarian cancer. So the first question we sought to answer was how much we can infer about a test's performance in pre-diagnostic specimens based upon their performance at the time of diagnosis. And the second question we wanted to answer was whether a panel of biomarkers can add value over a single marker, the standard being CA125. So uh, just to touch, go right to the conclusions, by leveraging resources within the EDRN and SPORE, we were able to compare more than 24 different markers and four panels on the same diagnostic specimens from the PLCO. We found that moving from phase two or case control specimens to the phase three specimens, there was a predictable loss in the performance soonest for markers that might be identified as acute phase reactants. And these were forming the basis of a couple panels that were offered for screening for ovarian cancer. But we also found that even the standard markers like CA125s seemed to lose their values as you got more remote from diagnosis. The top performing markers overall were CA125, HE4, and 72.4, excuse me, uh, and we found that the marker panels and algorithms tested in this study added at best marginal improvement over CA125 alone. So we believe that markers promoted for screening, even in a high-risk population, have to show performance uh, uh, in data uh, obtained prior to clinical performance, not simply on specimens obtained at the time of diagnosis. And while the search for new markers, especially ones that show signal more remote from diagnosis, should continue, new ways of using existing markers should also be explored, uh, say adding epidemiologic variables or prior um, marker values. I do want to say a little bit about perspectives raised by this study. While the PLCO trial concluded that general population screening with combined CA125 and ultrasound cannot be recommended, a larger trial in the United Kingdom concluded that screening was feasible. Uh, in, this, uh, in that trial, measurement of CA125 followed by transvaginal ultrasound did have good sensitivity and specificity and found that there was a reasonable ratio of uh, cases that required surgery to detected cases. The differences between the two trials were the use of CA125 before referral for ultrasound an improvement of sensitivity and specificity with serial uh, CA125 testing. So general population screening for ovarian cancer cannot currently be, rec be recommended, but I think the foundations for moving it forward can be clear. Uh, blood tests followed by ultrasounds for positives, not imaging as the first modality. <laughs> Thank you. Um, secondly, use serial CA125s rather than a static cutoff. And thirdly, investigate whether other markers also tested in serial fashion or add addition of epidemiologic variables can further improve performance. And I, I think NCI should form a stakeholder panel to explore the feasibility of starting a screening trial of ovarian cancer or at least a demonstration project. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>